Let's talk science yeah. for a moment, take you beyond the final frontier. Now, there is still so much to learn about black holes, which is why scientists have taken to creating their own black holes in their labs, which sounds like insanity. <laughs> That's analogous black holes, that is, and science engagement astronomer from the observatory, Dr. Daniel Kanema, joins us to tell us all about this very interesting physical system and what is going on. Are they trying to destroy <laughs> space and time as we know it? Dr. Dan, this, this is quite a scary topic for some reason for me. And maybe, for me. yeah, uh, maybe a, a good place to start is with what a black hole actually is. Never mind the analogous black hole. What, what is a black hole? So basically what a black hole is, is it's a very, very dense area of, of space where a, generally a star has collapsed or it's the center of a galaxy and there's a lot of mass in a very small area. So much mass that not even light can escape. So the gravitational force from all of this mass is, is so strong that light isn't fast enough to escape. Now, if you think of the Earth, uh, it has gravity. So if I throw a ball like that, it does a little loop, comes back down. That's because the Earth's gravity is pulling it back. Um, if, you, if you throw a ball up fast enough, like a rocket, um, then it can escape Earth's gravity. So if we want to uh, send a spacecraft out, send something to Mars, for example, uh, it has to go faster than 11 kilometers per second. To escape a black hole, it has to go faster than the speed of light, huh. which is why light can't escape. So that's what a black hole is. I mean, my next question then would be why it's still so difficult, because we've heard of studies that have got to do with black holes, but now that you've explained it in the simplest terms of how fast it's got to go, I suppose that makes it really difficult to study. Is it even more difficult now to study, or have you, have you made some uh, sort of headway in that regard? So because light can't escape from a black hole, they're very, very difficult to study because if light can't escape, then essentially no information can escape. So we can't look at the inside of a black hole. What we can look at and what we saw a few years ago was this first photo of a black hole, which scientists managed to put together. And that wasn't the black hole itself, but rather the gas around the black hole. So for the first time, we got to see very close to the black hole what the gas around the black hole was doing as it fell into the black hole. Mm. So that we can learn about, uh, but we can't really query the inside of a black hole and what's going on there, or very close to the sort of, what, what is called the event horizon, mm. which is basically the surface of the black hole, the point of no return. This is the area that, that terrifies me now, scientists observing and, and learning through creating their own analog black holes. What on earth is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Um, so, so we can't create a black hole on Earth. Uh, it takes an incredible amount of mass in a very, very small space. Um, you know, we're looking at sort of the mass of our sun uh, smaller than that. So it, it, it's not something we can create on Earth, uh, but we can create similar conditions. So in the same way that light can't escape a black hole, we can create a system where sound can't escape. And from that, we've got an analogous black hole. So it's the equivalent of a black hole, but for sound waves. And there, there we can start doing some studies. Researchers at Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, they recently created a black hole in their lab to test a Stephen Hawking theory. Uh, you please tell us all about that and how that's going for them. Basically, uh, on the surface of a black hole, so at this event horizon, uh, Stephen Hawking calculated that there would be a small amount of light, a small amount of emission coming off the surface of the black hole. Now, that's not something we can really observe in a real black hole. Uh, obviously, they're very difficult to observe, and then they're surrounded by all of this gas. So to get this very faint light, is, to observe it is, is near impossible. But in an analogous black hole, the same thing should happen. So a small amount of sound waves should actually escape from this analogous black hole. And that's something which the scientists have observed. And it behaves in the exact same way as Hawking radiation would. So the analogy is really, really good at the moment. And, and this is the first time that this has been done, and it's quite exciting, because now we can actually query what's going on in the physics of a black hole uh, by building these sort of analogous ones. How close are we to creating an actual black hole and, and playing around with, with uh, gravity in that way? 
Ooh, I mean, you, you need very high energies, uh, which we're not quite at yet. We're getting there, but, uh, you know, the, the scale of, of building a proper sort of black hole and the, the damage it would do, it's, it's not something we're going to have. We're not there yet. We're, we're not wanting that so just yet. In, in other words, time travel's not quite a thing yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Dr. Dan, <laughs> thank you so much for, for, as always, dumbing down something that was really complex to a point that I can, I can understand it, and I'm really excited about um, breaking new ground in any area of science, whether it's science operating out in space or us recreating that as an analogy here on Earth. But uh, what a cool concept. Thank you so much, man. A pleasure, always. That's uh, Dan Kadama once again showing us and uh, explaining to us how science is pushing the boundaries, how close uh, we can get to the truth, right? I love it. I man. guess we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for the latest developments, and there always are developments in that space. Dr. Dan, thanks yet again for that space update.